Algebra 1, 10.8c, Rational Equation Word Problem, Money, How Many Bills? So word problems that contain money and decimals can be easier if we make a table to organize our information. A table will help us write our equations. So here's our problem. A bank teller has $5 bills and $20 bills, and there's five more $20 bills than $5 bills, and the total of the money is $725. So how many $5 bills are there? So for my subscribers and viewers that are a little confused because, believe it or not, half of my viewers are not in the U.S., a bill can be a debt, like a phone bill or an electric bill. It can also be the mouth area of a bird, like a duck's bill. But a bill can be paper money, like a $5 bill or a $1 bill or a $20 bill. It's the paper money, okay? So we need to figure out if we've got a total of $725 and there's $5 bills and $20 bills and there's five more 20s than there are fives, how many fives are there? Ooh, that sounds really confusing, doesn't it? But it's not really that bad if we just assign variables and make a table, okay? So I'll show you. We're going to let X be the number of $5 bills, and that's what we're looking for, isn't it? It doesn't say how many 20s, it says how many $5 bills are there. So we're going to let X be the quantity of $5 bills, see? And we've got our table set up for the quantity of the bills, the value of the bills, and then the total dollar value of the bills. And see how this last column is going to be this amount times this amount, see? We've got our $5 bills, our $20 bills, and this is the combined total of $725 over here. So the 5 is going to be the value of the bill, okay? And all I did was I took the decimal point and the two zeros off because there's no pennies, there's no cents. It's not like $5.26 or $20.15. They all have zeros, see? So even the 725. So I just took the decimal point and the zeros off of all of them to make it easier to work with them just as regular numbers, okay? So this column is the $20 bills. We're going to let the x plus 5 equal the amount of $20 bills. That's the quantity of them. And that's the value of it. It's a $20 bill. It's 20. And then we would multiply x plus 5 times the 20 for this column for the total dollar value and the number of bills. And here's our equation right here. So the $725 is the total value and that is the blue one and the red one is going to equal this green one. So we have our equation. We have to figure out how many $5 bills plus how many $20 bills are going to make $725, okay? So our equation comes straight down this column. We've got 5x plus 20 times x plus 5 equals 725, see? And we have to do distributive property here, don't we? So we're going to do 20 times x is 20x, and 20 times 5 is 100. Now we can combine like terms, can't we? We've got a 5x and a 20x. That makes 25x. And it's plus 100 equals the 725. And we have to isolate this x. That's how many $5 bills there are to get our answer, okay? So we have a plus 100 here. So what we can do is take away 100 from each side of the equation, and that creates a zero pair here, doesn't it? And it eliminates it. So now we just have 25x equals 625. We divide both sides by the 25 coefficient. 25 divided by 5 is 1. That's our buddy, the invisible 1 identity property. So it's just an x. 625 divided by 25 is 25. 25 times 25 is 625, see? So we know that there are 25 $5 bills. Well, if there's 25 $5 bills, that's all we needed to find out. That's our final answer. But we could go further, couldn't we? If there's 25 $5 bills, then we know how many 20s there are because we get 25 plus 5. So that means... There's 25 $5 bills and 30 $20 bills. And when we add them together, they'll be $725. See? But remember, the original question was how many $5 bills, okay? So you want to make sure you're answering what they're asking for. 
We continued on, but that is the answer. X equals 25, okay? Let's try another one. A cashier has 126 bills in $5 and $10 increments that totals $840. So how many $5 bills and how many $10 bills are there? So now they do want to know how many of each type. So there's a pile of $5 bills and there's a pile of $10 bills and altogether there's 126 of them but when you count the, the money we've got $840. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find out. How many are in this pile and how many are in this pile? All right, so we make our table. We've got the number of bills, the dollar value of each bill, and then the total value. We've got our $5, our $10, and then the totals. So for the $5 bills, we're going to let X be the number of bills in this pile. And because there's 126 of them, 126 minus X is going to be the pile of $10 bills. See? And whatever that comes out to be, it's going to total 126, isn't it? The value of the $5 bill is 5. The value of the $10 bill is 10. So we multiply these together to get 5x. And we multiply these together to get 10 times 126 minus x. We have our equation, don't we? It's coming down this column. 5x plus 10 times 126 minus x equals 840. That's our equation. We have to do distributive property, don't we? So, we do 10 times 126 and get 1,260, and 10 times negative x, and we get minus 10x. Now we can combine this minus 10x and this 5x to get a negative 5x. And to isolate the x, we can subtract 1,260 from each side. That's going to put that one into the negative, isn't it? 1260 minus 840 is 420. So that means 840 minus 1260 is a negative 420. So now we've got negative 420 on this side and negative 5x on this side. To isolate the x, we just divide both sides by this coefficient negative 5, and a negative divided by a negative makes a positive, so we have a positive x here. And this negative 420 divided by negative 5 makes a positive 84. See? So we know that there are 84 $5 bills. X equals 84. So to find out how many $10 bills, because remember we need to find both, to find out how many $10 bills, we just take the 126 and take away the 84. 126 minus 84 is 42. So we know there's 42 $20 bills. And 84 plus 42 is 126. And we've got our answer. See? That wasn't too bad, was it? I think you can do this. All right? Our next video is going to be 10.9a. And we're going to talk about dividing by a monomial. If you want to see any of the previous videos, we did reciprocal of a number word problem. We did a lot of word problems. If you want to know how to add or subtract unlike denominators in a rational equation using a pattern, I have an entire algebra word problem playlist that's got lots of mixture and acid and pecans and cashew problems and all of that stuff. There'll be a link to those. And if you want to see the acid mixture problem we just did or the one with distance, rate, and time, there'll be links to those too, all right, to help you out so you can just click on them. Okay. Let's talk about dividing by a monomial, and I'll see you there. Bye.